military news. Everything you ever wanted to know about the A-10 Warthog's big-ass gun. The GAU-8 is a fearsome shooter. General Electric's 30mm GAU-8 Avenger cannon has been the primary weapon of the U.S. Air Force's A-10 Thunderbolt II ground attack plane for more than 40 years. It also arms the goalkeeper naval close-in weapon system. It's a huge and awesome gun. The GAU-8 has seven independent barrels with rotary locking bolts that are mechanically actuated. The weapon is powered by a pair of hydraulic motors and can, in theory, spew up to 4,200 tanks mashing depleted uranium rounds per minute. In the 1960s, the Air Force decided it needed a dedicated and affordable ground attack aircraft capable of destroying armored vehicles and static positions in close support of friendly ground troops. The threat of a massive Soviet armored push into Western Europe necessitated an aircraft and weapon system that could engage and destroy main battle tanks and armored personnel carriers. In September 1966, the Air Force launched the Attack Experimental Program, or AX, to develop the new close air support plane. The AX program called for an inexpensive aircraft with good low-speed maneuverability, long loiter time and an emphasis on survivability and firepower. The developers consulted A-1 Skyrider pilots with operational experience in Vietnam and revised the proposal in the summer of 1970. The new proposal specified a 30mm rotary autocannon with a rate of fire of 4 rounds per minute. The Air Force selected two competing gun designs from General Electric, which had developed the earlier M61 Vulcan, and Philco Ford, developer of the unsuccessful 25mm GAU-7. General Electric's design won out. The Air Force designated it GAU-8 or, more technically, the AA-49E6 gun system. General Electric didn't simply scale up its 20mm M61 Vulcan system as that would have resulted in a gun that far exceeded the Air Force's maximum weight requirement. Instead, the company developed a new, lighter system that it coupled with the Vulcan's linkless ammunition feed. The Air Force down selected two possible aircraft designs to carry the new gun, Fairchild, Republic's Yar-10 and the Yar-9 from Northrop. Both designs took the GAU-8 as the starting points. Fairchild mounted the Yar-10's cannon slightly to port with the firing barrel indexing on the starboard side at the 9 o'clock position. This placed the GAU-8 S45 kN of recoil force along the plane's centerline and prevented the A-10 from being pushed off target when it fired. Recoil adapters mitigated the amount of recoil that transferred to the plane's airframe. Trials began in late 1972 and, in January 1973, the Air Force selected the Yar-10. The A-10 is a sturdy durable aircraft that requires relatively little maintenance and can even operate from forward. Bases that often lack extensive support systems and fully prepared runways. The Air Force down selected two possible aircraft designs to carry the new gun, Fairchild, Republic's Yar-10 and the Yar-9 from Northrop. Both designs took the GAU-8 as the starting points. Fairchild mounted the Yar-10's cannon slightly to port with the firing barrel indexing on the starboard side at the 9 o'clock position. This placed the GAU-8 S45 kN of recoil force along the plane's centerline and prevented the A-10 from being pushed off target when it fired. Recoil adapters mitigated the amount of recoil that transferred to the plane's airframe. Trials began in late 1972 and, in January 1973, the Air Force selected the Yar-10. The A-10 is a sturdy durable aircraft that requires relatively little maintenance and can even operate from forward. Bases that often lack extensive support systems and fully prepared runways. Fairchild designed the aircraft for high survivability with an airframe that can withstand 23mm cannon fire and an armored cockpit rated to resist 57mm rounds. The A-10's fuel tanks are self-sealing and the aircraft can be flown in a so-called manual reversion mode if its hydraulics or avionics are damaged. The GAU-8 cannon itself weighs 620 pounds, while entire the AA-49E6 gun system weighs 4,029 pounds, totaling approximately 16% of the A-10's overall weight. The GAU-8 has seven barrels and was, upon its introduction, capable of firing up to 4,200 rounds per minute but the Air Force downgraded it to a still impressive 3,900 rounds per minute. 
At this rate each of the seven barrels fires 557 rounds per minute. In practice, pilots fire in one to two second bursts in order to conserve ammunition and extend barrel life. The Air Force rates the barrels as having a minimum life of 20,000 rounds. Each barrel features a quick release mechanism for ease of maintenance or replacement. The system's overall length is 18 feet and its ammunition drum is 3 feet in diameter. The GAU-8S magazine can hold up to 1,174 rounds but the Air Force usually loads only 1,150. Two independent hydraulic motors, which together produce 77 horsepower, power the ammunition drum feed and the gun itself. These motors spool up the rotation of the GAU-8S 7 barrels almost instantly. The AA-49E6 gun system doesn't eject spent casings from the aircraft. Instead they cycle back into the drum magazine and, later, the ground crew unloads them. This eliminates the danger of spent cases being sucked into engine intakes or damaging the airframe. Early on, ground crews replenished the a magazine manually. Reloads could take hours. However, in 1976 the Air Force requested proposals for an automatic loading system. The Colony Engineering Company won this contract with a design that could remove spent cases while simultaneously loading new ammunition. General Electric developed the GAU-8 S 30mm shells concurrently with the basic gun design. In order to punch through the armor of a main battle tank, the ammunition needed a hard metal penetrator. The optimal material for this was tungsten. But the majority of the world's tungsten supply was in China and the Soviet Union. As a result an alternative was found, depleted uranium. A byproduct of the enrichment of uranium for nuclear power reactors. It boasts approximately 60% of the radioactivity of naturally occurring uranium. As an added benefit, fragments burst into flames when they break off from the main projectile. General Electric's promotional material is careful to generically describe the depleted uranium as a heavy metal. General Electric developed two types of ammunition based on a Lycon's 30 by 173 mm 304 RK round, an armor-piercing incendiary round designated PGU-14B, and a PGU-13B, a high-explosive incendiary. A tens carry five PGU-14B rounds for every one PGU-13B round. Both shells feature aluminum alloy cases in order to minimize the weight and increase the planes. Payload. The PGU-14 BAPI ammunition can penetrate 55 mm of armor at a distance of 1. 220 m and up to 76 mm of armor at closer ranges of approximately 300 m. During tests in 1979, a TENS conducted attack runs against M47 Patton tanks simulating Soviet T-55 and T-62 tanks. The resulting report described the damage done as severe. Adding that low-level attack runs were very successful. Quote, between 11 and 27 rounds would destroy a tank. At 1,200 meters, 80% of the rounds and 8N fires struck within a 12-meter impact zone. In the mid-1970s Holland's Signal Elaboraten B. A Dutch armaments company, selected the GAU-8 as the gun system for its goalkeeper close-in weapon system. Goalkeeper defends surface ships against missiles aircraft and fast surface threats out to 2,000 meters. Numerous navies deploy the system including the Royal Netherlands Navy, the U.K. Royal Navy and the navies of South Korea, Portugal and Belgium. The A-10 can also carry a further 16 rounds of ordnance on underwing hardpoints, including rockets, missiles such as the AGM-65 Maverick and a variety of bombs. The A-10 first saw action during the 1991 Gulf War destroying an estimated 3,000 Iraqi vehicles including some 900 tanks. One engagement or two A-10s destroy 23 Iraqi tanks between them, while the F-111 was the Air Force's most successful tank destroyed during the Gulf War. The A-10 was the leading close air support aircraft. Since 1991, A-10s have since seen service in Afghanistan. The 2003 Iraq War and coalition operations in Libya in 2011. More recently A-10s have struck Islamic states in Iraq and Syria. 283 modernized A-10Cs remain in service with the active Air Force and Air National Guard. General Electric has produced 770 GAU-8 cannons for both A-10s and the goalkeeper systems.
by Matthew Moss published in War is Boring. Com this story originally appeared at Historical Firearms. the bombs don't hit their targets, none of us has accomplished our mission.